So let's talk about it. Did I have the worst transfer window of all time? Maybe. Folks, welcome back to Glory Hunter with me, not to mention FM. Good to see you. I hope you find you very, very well. If you're enjoying the series, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and let's delve in to our season review. Now, I don't look at this review that often, but after the season we've just had and obviously with what's to come in Glory Hunter, we should probably talk about it a little bit. And of course, I've noted at the start of the video, the transfer window or the new arrivals, as it points out, there they took a while to get here, which is not, which is ironic enough, really. A B minus we've been given there. Um, some mistakes were made on every level. This, my friends, might go down, and we have to talk about it, might go down as the worst sale I've ever made. I've made some bad ones. I remember selling Morata once in a Man United save or something. He went to Arsenal, scored a hatch against me next game. It was something like that. It was, it was bad. But Mike and Inter Milan, as we conclude our season, have had one of the most remarkable years that you'll see in Serie A. Only one defeat to Zebra late in the season. A 5-1 demolition as well. I mean, Mike's really suffered there. But 26 clean sheets, you can see there then, I, I, it was sort of a spoiler. We've got 81 points this season. I should, I should say, we've ended the season as sort of the end of the season went. Draw to Sassuolo after beating them in the cup yesterday. Spoiler. Uh, Bologna was a three. So hang on, we beat them in the, in the cup. Run the graphic, for heaven's sake. So there it is, locked in. Our first trophy rises from the flag. And uh, yeah, we've now got one done. Thank you, Rick, again, for putting together the animations. So, Sassuolo, nil-nil, not great. Nil-nil, uh, sorry, 3-2 against Bologna, and then a 4-0 win over Palmer uh, with Dabala and Diaz getting some goals. And that's it for, Bir for Biram Diaz, or Brahim Diaz. It was right of me to get his name wrong. Uh, he goes back to Madrid. Not got another year, whether we stay or not. I think the chances of him being here are not overly likely. Can't see myself signing him necessarily at the price he is. You never know, though. I mean, two years away from Madrid, there's almost no chance he stays at Madrid. I feel like that probably won't happen. Uh, going back, though, to the, to the league table, and this is quite interesting to me. We came third. 81 points was the tally. Last year, we got 83. and We were only four points off. So we're two points worse off. We scored considerably less goals, as much as defensively, we talked about some of the issues that we had. 46 conceded with Mike last season. This year, uh, 45. So the difference really, it was, we were one goal better off this year. That didn't seem to be the problem. No Anthony Martial appears to have been a bit of the issue. 78 goals scored compared to the 97 of last year. But regardless, the points difference, barely anything. Inter Milan, on the other hand, managed to get 20 more points. And that, was the real problem. Zebra resurgent, so much better this year than last year. But you'd have told them 95 points at the start of the year. They'd have been loving that. But again, Inter have had this phenomenal year. Again, one defeat for them. Was it, was it, I know they played Zebra relatively late on in the year. Yeah, there it is. Look, oh, so frustrating for them. I'm almost disappointed in a way that Inter didn't go unbeaten. So what next for us? Again, we'll go back, we'll get, we'll get back to the review and talk about some of the, uh, the, the players that have succeeded and, not succeeded. £58 million for Volovic now. I think 26 in, in 37 is pretty good. Pre-Messi and Ronaldo, people would have been loving that. And equally, Adi Amy, really good year from him. 28 goals in 49. The rest of them... Oh, dear. Uh, I don't know if I'm happy with any of the other ones, really. I mean, Lodi was okay, but when you look at some of the outlays, 12.5 million for Busquets. Oh, dear. I've ruined it on deadline day by, by signing SMS. It sort of changed everything. The plan was to play Tadali further forward, but then when you get SMS, you don't really need to. An F rating for that. One of the worst transfers ever. Uh, Ataro Vidal, an E from the board. Not good at all. Lodi, a C. They're content, as am I, probably. Not too bad. SMS for 75 million. If this is anything worse than it. I mean, C is unbelievable. That's, for me, that's an E as well. Not good. Quartes, I didn't really improve defensively that much, as we talked about. So... A C for me, probably, yeah, and the board agree. Livakovic, B+. Plus. Solid performance all year. They've gone C, but I'd, I'd have gone slightly higher. Uh, Cavani, 11 starts, 11 goals. That's a B+. Plus at, uh, as a, what the... A bad F? Are you kidding? For that? No chance. Uh, the loan of Vanel. I thought, he'd, he'd, again, he did okay. A B for him. I mean, are you kidding me? The Cavani... That is bollocks, by the way. Apparently, his wage is the issue. Okay, yeah, 135k is a lot. He's, hang on, is he improving, Cavani? Football manager viewers are physically going down, improving literally everywhere else. 
uh, carriers they don't even react to. That's quite sad, really. Um, Adiemi, Vilovic, though. Those two boys. Yeah, not ideal. And again, talk about the outs. Mike's the problem. Rebic, did he have a good year at Bournemouth? I'm kind of interested. Not amazing in terms of average rating. Uh, there's loads of stuff that I've not looked at yet. I was saving it for this video. Moments to remember all this sort of business. I'm not too interested in most of that. There's our best 11. The formation now is becoming a bit synonymous with me in this team. So that's quite nice. But other than that, disappointing. Tonali, fans player of the year, young player of the year. Signing of the season. Adi Amy gets it. Uh, Dybala gets goal of the season. I mean, the only good thing we did really. Livakovic, I'm noticing there, by the way. The most clean sheets we've ever had. 22. So definitely outperformed Mike from last year. But Mike from this year. Oh, different animal. I can't believe how well he did. If he can do, if he can do that next year, then fair enough. That's going to be very painful for me. But of course, there it is. The Italian Cup has been won and sealed. And there's a few other little bits of news here, as well as the club vision. Uh, make the most of set pieces is in there now, apparently. And sign players under the age of 22 for the first team. I won't negotiate. I'll just sort of go with it. Work within the wage budget. Mm, I've been a little bit frivolous with that. Uh, the team meeting I'll do in just a moment. Uh, but here we are. There's some interesting, it's some interesting stuff here. Gentle, hang on. Primero Gentleman apparently he's got the least amount of yellow and red cards it, with with none so that's i mean i didn't know that was an award uh tony abraham italian player of the year i voted for him so fair enough i couldn't vote for one of my own players goalkeeper of the year yeah i'm gonna move on i think <laughs> yeah that's annoying um and then our manager the manager of the year hasn't been voted for yet win percentage ratio yeah i don't think i'm gonna get it somehow but of course don't forget zidane He's off. He's leaving at the end of the year. Uh, I do you know what, Where is Zidane going? Chelsea? I think Zidane's going off to Chelsea. So there is a spot at Juve if I want it. Um, who do I vote for? I'm going to vote for Zidane just to make it even funnier. Uh, because if he's off, then that's not that's not a problem for me. Uh, Oblak, by the way, at Atletico, the home of Livakovic, has had a very, very good season. Now, of course, these are the episodes that I don't normally do outside of Glory Hunt here. If we take a look around the leagues, because we're at the very end of May, all the leagues are finished now, so we can take a proper deep dive in at what's gone on. Is there a job there that will come up that'll be worth taking? I, I don't know that there is. We're going to look through these leagues first, see if anything stands out. Again, nothing really there. I feel like I get into the Champions League just, so they'll be happy. Same old story in, in Ligue 1. Not that surprising. Uh, and then the Bundesliga, I'm going to guess that Bayern won it. At a cancer. So, job-wise, it's looking pretty... It's not looking amazing, is it? Let's face it, it's looking pretty slim. Let's take a look at job security, though, uh, and let's see if any big jobs have become available. No. And I've noticed that Gerard is manager at Marseille, which is a bit of an odd one. Mourinho's Belgium manager. Things have definitely happened in this save. Uh, the France job is insecure. I'm interested. Italy job's insecure. I'm interested. But in terms of the big club jobs, it's quite obvious that none of them are available which means viewers we probably now stay at milan and if we do stay at milan how big does the rebuild have to be we'll just discuss our plans for next season in which i'm going to say same level of ambition like i want to win things next year if i don't win the league next season i'm, I'm leaving myself a bit of a task because of course you leave you have x amount of years in a country in theory right there's five five places to go so you essentially have four years in each one this will be our third year if we don't win it we leave ourselves one year so the idea of, of going early would mean that if we came back you'd probably get two years to do it if you end up at psg you might give yourself some years back but i find that very very difficult in the first glory hunter so it makes me nervous and again they're a little bit will they won't they in the other leagues that is part of the challenge though in the premier league there are three or four clubs always vying for it same situation in the in la liga similar to league one really in the bundesliga that if you don't get bayern looks like it's going to be pretty difficult this year so you're going to need to spend some years making something happen uh apparently people are unhappy i'm going to i'm going to insist and then positively neutrally and positively say stuff we always get the same things because that's how football manager works so uh, what do we do from here do we just wait and see the money we've got 56 million pounds i think is enough of a starting point but i think we're in a position with this squad with this team where i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to sell to buy and because we didn't win the league although we're still in the champions league i think there will be interested parties now of course there are certain players that i'd like to get rid of and if i get rid of them for 50 million quid and it goes to one of those four interested sides that we might be in luck because it may mean we could change things around a little bit the big question for me and this is something I wanted to talk to you about a little bit, is tactically. Do I go to a flat four? 
And will that make... Because defensively, we are a little bit shaky. Now, there's two options, obviously. You play a three, and you bro you drop this player and play him in here, and then maybe you sell one of Benesso or SMS or the two of them, and then you have a Kessie Tanani midfield or something like that, right? And you still have this triangle up front, which has worked pretty well for me. Dybala this year, has to be said, pretty good year. Uh, uh, 13 goals, 10 assists. Played that shadow striker role really well. Uh, played a bit front in the later game. Actually scored two goals. Again, maybe another option for me. If someone comes in for Vlovic, I think that's pretty unlikely. Someone might even come in for Dybala. You never know. This is kind of the weird situation we're in now. Do I change system? Do I stick with the system? Do I go to a four? Do I play a three? Do I stay with the diamond? Do we bring in some wingers around Adi Amy and have like one striker playing further forward? Or do you have Adi Amy play out wide and, and build it around Vlovic? I've got a lot of questions that need answering and it's going to be a big old summer window. And I may, I may even update you before the next episode. I know this episode is a bit of like a chatty episode and after the, the excitement of, of winning something yesterday, this is like a bit back down to the challenge here. As uh, I noticed that Bush gets is unhappy. You're not the only one, mate. An SMS also not happy. Wanted to play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Maybe that's how we get a lot more out of SMS next year. We, we, we build him in as a box-to-box -box midfielder and you have someone more creative next to him like does that mean you sell Kessie and you bring in a real playmaker a true playmaker is Talani that guy maybe maybe Talani is that guy maybe we play something like this oh maybe we play something like this and then we go out and buy some wingers that could be it maybe we do this and we go out and buy some wingers whoa this is you're catching it live viewers this is like do it better all of a sudden maybe that's the plan I spent a summer selling all the wingers but the reality is I've not got a huge amount of attacking midfielders. And with Diaz leaving, it leaves me wondering that maybe that's where we go out and buy some world-class players at left and right wing and have them as wingers and have them maybe Dybala and Adeyemi, keep Liao, and then also have Volovic, of course, as an option off the bench maybe or as a starter. You have these four strikers. You have the four midfielders, SMS or Kessi, Tonali or another player probably. Ooh. I like this. Left back, couple of options. Yeah, you, I was doing a lot of talking and pausing. Not just because I got a blocked nose, but because I'm really I'm really trying to figure out what we do here. If we bring wingers in, we probably have to bring in three. Maybe even four. Probably three. I mean, Adi Amy can play both sides to, to some degree. Um, Liao can kind of play out there a little bit on the left. I mean, is he an option on the left, actually? Oh, Maybe I don't have to sell because we've got these options that can play out wide. The problem with oh, the problem with Liao is that he's right-footed, very strong. And if you're playing wingers, ordinarily you want to be left-footed. But if you've got overlapping wingers, like say you've got Tio Hernandez on that side, it's not as big a concern. At right-back, it'll be a lot easier to find a right-back than it will be a wing-back, which might make it life a bit easier. Oh, I really am having a right think here, viewers. This is, this is interesting. I've never done a video like this i've never done a video where i'm literally talking through every little decision we make pre-transfer window in the hope of what we can get and then player wise then who do you, who do you go out and get you have to like this is this this is the kind of the issue or the situation i have to go out and get ready-made players right now i can't really wait and see i hardly need a goalkeeper as well oh livakovic do i get livakovic back that's that's another debate i've got to have I think we probably, if, if they'll let us have him, it's such a cheap deal um, that we probably should. There's a mandatory future fee on him, which I assume they're going to whack straight back in there. I mean, I'll do it for 15. I mean, I need a goalkeeper. They they, they are trying to wangle more money out of me. Okay, 16 million up front. Okay, they're not happy with that at all. We'll do 16.75. I'll get rid of these. And I'll make the offer. And I guess that is now up in the air. I guess we'll see what happens with that one. Oh, team, what do you do? I think we do. I think I'm making the decision to stay at Milan for one more season. I think I'm making that decision right now in the episode. Like, I, I hit record today, and I wasn't sure what we were going to do. But the more I'm into this now, the more I'm thinking about it, is that that is, that that is our option here, isn't it? Is to stay here longer. I'm very interested in your thoughts. Get in the comment section. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to read what you would do. I'm also going to be honest and say that the chances are by the time I read your ideas, I'll have had to play through and get ahead a little bit. Obviously, transfer windows take a little bit more time, so I have to do that a little bit ahead. I, spoiler, it's a, it's a Monday evening for me. So I'm going to play through, try and get my window done, but I'm curious to know what you would have done. And let's see if any of you have done what I've done or, or agree with the thoughts I've, I've outlined in this one. Hmm.
Yeah, I think that I think we're gonna stay. I mean, I've got a contract, right? <laughs> I just, just want to make sure I'm contracted for another season. Am I contracted for another season? Yeah, okay. So I've definitely got one more year here anyway. And I guess the only thing that's gonna change this is if there's a managerial shuffle. And with Juve needing a new manager, what if they offer me the job? I mean, that would be the craziest bit if Juve comes to me and go. Do you fancy it? This is an interesting list of players, by the way. This is the list of players that are out of contract at the end of the year. Um, or at the end of, yeah, at the end of the year. I'm looking at Busquets and Cavani, some big earners. Tio Hernandez arguably needs a new deal, which is a massive lot out of my wage budget. But I'm also thinking, do I want to leave him in case I want to buy him? Glory Hunter is a cruel mistress. I might do. Oh, dear. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, lots to think about, lots to consider. I'm not really sure what to do. Adi Amy gets best young player, by the way. That's sick for him. Really happy with that. Uh, Tanali got player of the month. I mean, let's just congratulate Tanali as well while we're here. We've got the recruitment me meeting. I mean, should we, yeah, do you know what viewers? Why not? Let's talk, let's, let's talk through this as well. Let's see who they suggest for me if we're to play this, this system. And because we've just set this as the formation, we've played a blinder there. Because we've just set this as, as the formation, they're now going to go out and try and find players that they think fit this. So let's see. Uh, Jeremy Pino. As a, as a left winger, I mean, I do quite like him. I don't necessarily think he's got the attributes to be right right now. Not many options have come in, it must be said, but they've not had very long to think about it, to be fair. Uh, the other winger as well, though, have they got? Have they got? This guy from Sociedad. I do like him a lot. I think he's great, actually. I can't say his surname, but under the Spaniard, really, really good. Someone to consider. But again, the money there is so much. 80-something million. And Fati, he would be obviously brilliant, but... How do you get him away from Barcelona? I know they've got money issues, but unless they want to sell him for 35 million, that probably isn't going to happen. Uh, where else are we looking here? Lots of different players. Pedri. Again, a lot of Barcelona players being suggested. I don't know why they're suggesting these players because I obviously can't get them. Another go. A lot, of, a lot of players from Spain, interestingly, are being recommended to me. Uh, Nuno Mendes at left back. Again, I'm probably going to have left backs forever at this point. This is a player I would love to sign. Uh, Josko Gavidiol, I think, is brilliant. I think about him next to Quartes or next to Tamori. He'd be amazing. Uh, the one player that, isn't, uh, that is available right now is Joe Gomez is transfer listed. It'd be interesting to maybe bring him in next to Tamori. Have two English uh, two English, English centre-backs. Uh, a, few, a few youngsters as well that we've been looking at that I've already got scouted. Uh, one of the best young players around. There's a guy from Spain. I don't know if he'll appear on this list as uh, other future players. Is he going to be here? He's not. Let me just find him a minute. He play Who does he play for? I think it's Villarreal. Hang on a minute, gang. Victor Velasco is the man. This would be a cool signing. I mean, it doesn't play the position we're looking at at the moment, but I think the goal of the save is to one day have Victor Velasco in my team. Pin it. I want to remember this guy. All right, so we didn't get offered that many cool players, it must be said, for our team, although our offer for Livakovic has been agreed. And of course, because there's an our mandatory fee on Livakovic, uh, I've just, I'm saying it was a backup here, and the, the wage is tiny. So there's nothing to say I won't go out and buy another goalkeeper when I know I have him for free right now. It's not the worst thing. I guess it's going to be a case of let's see which bits of business we can do, and hopefully, hopefully we can get something good going because we have got a big, big summer on our hands here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Again, sorry if you don't like the chattier episodes, but I think, again, these are really important for the context of Glory Hunter. You've had a lot of my thoughts there on what I think we do. I'm curious to know if you agree. Again, get in the comment section. Let me know. It'll be a good read through. And I'll probably read some of them actually in the next video to see if people agree with what I'm suggesting or not. And if I've got against some of those ideas. Uh, that's going to bring us to the end then. Leave a like if you enjoyed. We love with care if we don't spend your time. Glory Hunter rumbles on. The next season is coming up.